So, Grandpa, would you mind talking a little bit about what your life was like growing up in New Hampshire when you were a kid? Well, I don't know. Do you want me to start in from the time I was born? Uh, um, like, uh, sure. Well, like, how are things different in Andover or in this area, I guess? Well, I don't know they're much different than they are in any small town mm -hmm. like Andover. But, yeah. Uh, I, I like small towns. The average family, I mean, my father and mother, and I had three sisters. We all went to school. And your sisters were older than you or younger than you? I forgot. I had one sister older, four okay. years older, and then I had one sister two years younger and then mm -hmm. one three years younger. Yeah. Ruth, in fact, Ruth and I, that's the one that's two years younger than me. Uh, she used to be one of my closest friends, closest sister. She used to go hunting with me all the time. Oh, oh wow. At the, at the time when I got the bobcat, she, she was with me. Oh, wow. I used to, we used to trap hedgehogs because he used to pay us 50 cents a nose. Because as a kid, I didn't have a trapping license, but those ledges right up in Potter Place there, you can see the ledges from. Especially if you're coming out from New London, mm -hmm. you're like a mountain, you see that big ledge up in there? That's where all the hedgehogs were. And we used to trap up there. We used to go up there every single day. And if we got one, we'd cut the nose off mm -hmm. and take it down to Slackman's office. It'd be 50 cents for every nose you get. And that one time we went up there and uh, we went around the corner of the ledge where I had a trap set. And there's a bobcat snarling at us like that. Come find out he's in the trap. I didn't know it at the time, but <clears throat> so I shot at him, but he went down. But I just wounded him evidently, and I, I was scared to even go near him because a wounded bobcat would have attacked you. So it was about a mile from home, and we ran back home. Got my father come up there with a shotgun. And he was he was up then. He was alive. So good oh, thing yeah. I didn't go near him. Mm -hmm. And he's mounted down to the fish game department now. Wow. They give you twenty dollars back then. I was only fifteen years old. You <laughs> just open up and then there's a little pad inside and they step on that and it releases the thing that catches them. Ah. Oh. It's like a bear trap a little bit. Yeah, so it's supposed to get like the hedgehog's yeah. whole body. So right? One one thing about most wild animals, so they've always told me, you know, I don't know how true mm -hmm. it is, but like a fox or bobcat or something like that. If they get hung up in a trap, or you hook your trap solid so they can't go anywhere with it, uh, sometimes they'll chew their foot off just to get out of it. I don't know how true it yeah. is, but it sounds like it might be. Mm -hmm. But I so I never hook my traps because a hedgehog can't pull them very far anyway. Right. Because it had a hook on the end of the chain. It always gets snarled up in some brush or a tree or something, so they couldn't go very far with it. They'd drag it away, but and that's the only thing they think that this why this bobcat didn't release himself, chew his foot off because it wasn't a hook solid. Oh, yeah. Now, how true it is, I don't know. But mm -hmm. That's my hedgehog story. Anyway. Uh -huh. <laughs> so what did my you... bobcat story. Too. Yeah, that's one of the big ones. Yeah. <laughs> so what did you do with your $20? I never asked I you that. I don't remember now. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I was some happy 15-year-old kid. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but back long when I got it, I didn't have a camera to take a picture of years ago. But yeah. I'd take a picture of it down there and saw it mounted sets up on the wall or did. Mm -hmm. They keep changing that stuff down there. Yeah. What, it's been down there for quite a while. What year yeah. was this, do you think? Oh, I think I was 15, so yeah. that's 70 years ago. Okay. Mm -hmm. A lot of different grade levels in one, in one room, right? Yeah, we had eight uh -huh. grades. Yeah. So, all were they, would, 
how would they teach the older students new things and then the younger students, you know, the things that they... Well, I don't know. They give every class, they give different assignments to them. Mm -hmm. While the kids are working on the assignments, they'd be teaching some other class. And uh -huh. then, then they'd give them something to do and teach another class something. And I don't, don't yeah. remember exactly how they done it, but everybody was doing something different. I mean, yeah. that was the grades, I mean, everybody weren't doing spelling at once, uh, mm -hmm. looking English, uh, history, uh, yeah. the grades. The first uh -huh. grade was doing something, Yeah. maybe first and second, I don't know, but in the seventh and eighth grade were different, different mm -hmm. doing something different actually, uh, doing some math. Uh, yeah. Each each one had something to do. I mean, it sounds like you did a lot of learning on your own too, you know, in the groups, through, oh, yeah. through the assignments, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Did you have any really good friends at school? Yeah. I don't, I don't remember. Just, I mean, mm -hmm. I guess we're friends with everybody, I guess. Yeah, you're easy to like, so. <laughs> yeah. Um, all right, so did you, were you on a farm growing up? Or was that Mimi? I'm getting like everybody's childhoods mixed up. Were you, were you, were you on a farm? You weren't on a farm, okay. No, no, <laughs> Sorry. Um, okay, well, what kind of responsibilities did you guys have around the house? You, oh, you and your sister? We had to chop the wood and bring in the wood. Mm -hmm. We always had wood fires. We didn't have any furnaces. Yeah. Makes sense. We had a cow once. I had to milk the cow, feed the pigs, mm -hmm. feed the chickens. When we had chickens, we didn't mm -hmm. always have them. But we had to go up across, well, when we lived in Potter Place, we had to go up across the road to get our water. There's no well, no, right. we don't turn the faucet on. Oh. We had to go get it in a pail, lug it down across oh, the road. It wasn't really that. a farm. We had a barn. Right. But we, there was no land that we was in there. Everything was done inside the barn, I mean. Yeah. Uh -huh. With that one cow, we didn't have the cow for an awful long time anyway. But Mm -hmm. Pigs, we always had pigs, raised pigs. Well, like I always raised pigs out in my shed out back there. Yeah, I remember that. When, we when, about. The, when the kids were small. Mm -hmm. But, uh, and we had a few chickens, we weren't very many, but just as we could get a few eggs now and then. <laughs> yeah. Well, we had one old big uh, female pig, and we lived up on a flat. And the house was. The main house is here, and there's a shed out here, and a little corner in here. Well, my mother had a flower garden, and we had this great big old sow, a female pig. Mm -hmm. And she'd wander around the lawn anywhere she wanted to go. She always <laughs> came back to the farm. She knew where to eat. Yeah. So she never wandered, and we kids always played with it. Well, <laughs> my mother told me this story. I don't remember it, but yeah. the pig was laying down in the flower garden one fall day. Kind of a cool day, but it was nice and warm in that corner. Mm -hmm. And the pig was laying down, laying on its side, and here I was, snuggled right up in the, oh. up, up in the pig's belly, and they're sleeping. Oh, wow. <laughs> and, uh, how true it is, I don't know. I don't yeah. know anything about it, but I remember the pig. Mm -hmm. It was a big old sow. Yeah. It wandered, just wandered around all by itself. <laughs> always come back, knew where to going to be fed. Yeah. And always come back, go in the barn at night. I don't know how true any of that is, but yeah. I can't imagine my mother making up a story like that. Yeah.